Welcome. In this video, we're going to go over the calculations for an analysis of covariance. Of course, uh, if you're actually doing an analysis of covariance, you're probably going to want to use statistical software. But it's nice to kind of at least once do one of these by hand so you can get a gist of what's going on inside the machine. Although we're going to use uh, an approach using computational formulas, which are shortcuts that a, a computer software wouldn't need to make. But in any case, so if you're doing an ANCOVA, uh, you have, in this example, we're going to have one covariate, so one variable we want to statistically control for. We're going to have one dependent variable or outcome variable, and to keep things fairly straightforward, we're going to have one independent variable. So here we have an independent variable with three levels. Uh, for, for lack of creativity, we'll call those levels A, B, and C. So those are the three groups that we have here. And we have within each group a column that represents the covariate and a column that represents the A score on the dependent variable. Because we're going to need these for the computations that follow, I've also created a column within each group that represents the squared score for the covariate. And then at the bottom, I have the sum of the squared scores as I created the sum of the covariate scores here. So if we add up all the scores for the covariate, it's 515 If we s for group 1. If we square all the scores for the covariate and then add them up, it's 44,251, right? So I've done the same thing for the dependent variable. I created a column with the, the raw scores uh, within each group and the sum of the raw scores, and then also a column with the squared scores and the sum of the squared scores. And then finally, because we'll need this ingredient later as well, within each group, I've created a column that represents the product of the covariate and the dv. So in, in the formulas that follow, the covariate will be symbolized as x, and the dv will be symbolized as y. So this has been symbolized as xy to represent the product of the covariate and the dependent variable. So it's simply 80 times 100, right? And then I've created a column with the product for the covariate, and then sum the product of the covariate at the bottom. So I did that separately for the three groups in the design so that I would have the ingredients necessary for these rather large formulas that follow. So these are the computational formulas that I've borrowed from the Tabachnik and Fidel textbook. So what we, we first are going to do is we're going to create the sum of squares between and the sum of squares within ignoring the covariate. So that's basically exactly what you would do if you were doing this by hand in a one-way ANOVA. You would follow this formula. Then we're going to uh, do ba basically the same exact computations, uh, but for the covariate. And then we're going to do similar computations, but involving what's called the cross products or the, the products of the x and y variable. And once we have those three, actually six, I should say, uh, results, we will plug them in to an equation that will create a corrected between group sum of squares and a corrected within group sum of squares. And that will then be plugged into the usual equations for calculating uh, the, the, the F ratio and the p-value and so on for a uh, ANOVA analysis. So the first sum of squares that we're going to compute are sum of squares uh, for y for the outcome in the usual way. Well, this is the computational formula, but the usual way we would do it with the computational formula if we didn't have a covariate. So this is just ignoring the covariate. So the first the first bit of the equation we have here is 
just adding up all the scores for y in each group. So the sum of the sum of y. So that's the column that I've created here, right? It's 592, and then for for group two, it would be 509, and for group three, it would be 455. Squaring those, adding them up, and dividing by little n, where little n would be the number of subjects within each group, which in this example is 6. So we take the totals within each group, square the total, add up the totals, and divide by 6. And then we subtract from that the sum of all of the scores on y. So that would be adding up all the total scores on y, the dependent variable. So we would take 592 plus 509 plus 455, add those, add those up, square the total, and then divide by the total sample size here, k times n, which is six observations per group times three groups, so that would be 18. Okay, so once we do that, then we have the sum of squares between, which is basically our sum of squares between as, you know, just ignoring the covariate in, in, in just a, a straightforward one-way analysis of variance. And then we can get the sum of squares within. Uh, sum of squares within on the left-hand side of the equation, it's, it's just every single score squared and then added up for the y for the y variable for the dv so since i've already squared the dv and added up the total within each group then i would just need to add together the squared score uh, for the dv in group one plus group two and then plus group three and then i'll have the left hand side of the sum of squares within group equation and then the right hand side of the equation is actually identical to the left-hand side of the equation that we just used to calculate between groups, uh, which we did by adding up all the scores in a group, squaring it, and adding up all those squared scores, so the three squared scores per group, and then dividing it by little n, which here is 6. So these two are identical values. And then we would have the sum of squares within group, right? So that's just from a straightforward ANOVA. Now we want to do the same exact thing, but with the covariate, with the x variable. So here we have the sum of all the x's within each group. And we square each group. And then we add up the squared scores for each group and divide by n which here is 6. And then on the right-hand side, we take the total, right, add up all the scores for x. So the sum of all the scores for x, and then square that sum, and then divide by the total sample size, which here is 6 times 3, is 18. If we do that, then we'll have the sum of squares between groups for the x variable, for our covariate, and then we'll do the calculation for sum of squares within groups for the x variable, which on the left-hand side, similarly to how we got the sum of squares for the y variable, within group on the left-hand side here, we will take all of the squared scores for the x variable. So when I squared each covariate and added it up, then I could just sum all of the squared scores for the covariate. And we'll have the left-hand side of the equation, and then the right-hand side of the equation here is the same as the left-hand side of the equation here which is 
the sum of all the covariate scores in a group squared, then summed, and then divided by little n, which here again is 6. So then we have the sum of squares between and within for the y variable. We have the sum of squares between and within for the x variable. And now we just need to get the sum of the products, or what's sometimes called sum of the cross products. So as you noticed before, I multiplied x times y within each group and then added up the total. So we will do that here now. So here we have the sum of y times the sum of x within each group and then add it up. So you take the products of x and y within each group and then add them up and then divide by the within group sample size, which is 6. And then here we subtract from that the sum of all the y scores plus times rather times the sum of all the x scores so ignoring group membership just sum all the y and sum all the x multiply them together to get the product and then divide by the number of groups times the number of observations within each group which here is 18 and then you'll have the sum of the products or cross products for within. And then finally to get, or for between rather, and then finally to get for within, you here we have the sum of the product for every x and y observation. So you take every x times every y and then add them up. So basically the sum of this column, this column, and this column. So we have that on the left hand side of the equation here and then on the right hand side of the equation it is exactly the same as the left hand side of the equation above you take the sum of y in each group times the sum of x in each group, multiply them, and then add up the totals. And then we divide by the sample size, which is 6. So then we'll have the sum of squares within. And some of the cross products, rather, within. So now we have pretty much all of the ingredients that we need. We have the sum of squares for y between and within. So that's the ordinary ANOVA. Then we partitioned the covariate into sum of squares between and within. And then finally, we computed the cross products between and within. And now we can finally compute the corrected sum of squares between groups and within groups correcting for the relationship between the covariate and the dependent variable. So introducing the statistical control of the covariate. So to do that, uh, we can use this equation here, which looks a little intimidating, but we, we just are going to plug in the ingredients we already have. So we'll start with the sum of squares between groups for y. And from that, we'll subtract this equation. So we're starting with 1587.444 here. And then we're going to subtract the sum of the between group cross products and the within group cross products. So that was 744 times 7.66, we square that and we divide it by the sum of squares between groups for the covariate x plus the sum of squares between groups for the within groups for the for the covariate. We divide 
and then subtract squared some of the cross products within groups by some of the squares within groups for x. So we subtract that inside the brackets here, and then finally subtract that from the sum of squares between groups, and our result is the corrected sum of squares, which in this example I get 1,099. And then the correction for within is a little bit more straightforward. We take the original sum of squares within groups, and we subtract from it this equation here, which is the sum of the products within groups, sum of the products within groups, 7.66 squared, divided by sum of squares within groups for the covariate. And then finally, subtract that from sum of squares within groups, and the result will be the corrected sum of squares within groups. So then we can proceed to compute the ANOVA. So we can create the mean square effect or between by taking the degrees of freedom. So since there's three groups here, the degrees of freedom in the numerator will be two. And then also uh, the degrees of freedom for within uh, will be 14 because we have n minus the number of groups, then also the number of covariates. So that'll be n minus 3 minus 1, which will leave us with 14 degrees of freedom. And so we take the degrees of freedom, divide it into the sum of squares, and we get the mean squared between and the mean squared within. And then finally, we divide the within MS into the between MS, and we get the F ratio, which we can then use the F ratio to determine the p-value. So it's kind of a, a long process doing it this way. Um, it's maybe worth it to do it this way once, just, just to say you did. But uh, after doing it this way once, I think y you'll, you'll uh, be better off to rely on computer software to do the calculations for you. Uh, interestingly, computer software is not likely to use these formulas. It's probably uh, relying on matrix computations uh, involving the dummy coded predictors and the covariate using uh, a regression approach to the analysis. Uh, since ANCOVA is just basically a special case of uh, regression where you have a categorical independent variable and a interval ratio statistical control variable and typically your primary focus is on the effects of the categorical independent variables after statistically controlling for the uh, interval ratio covariates so it's it's basically just a a specific case of a regression analysis uh, all right i thank you for for listening to that i hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, don't forget to like and subscribe and to buy all of my merch.